Hey guys, what's going on? Troy at Mountain Man Treasure here. It's been a slow weekend, but I'll show you what we saw. <music> This channel, guys, all about reselling. It's about me going into uh, garage sales, estate sales, thrift stores, sometimes Walmart or Target, doesn't matter where, buying stuff and then reselling it online, ideally for profit. And uh, where I choose to do that is on eBay. I've dabbled around in uh, Poshmark and Mercari and Etsy and different places like that, but uh, I like eBay. That's kind of my uh, my favorite spot. That's where I've settled in, and I do this part time. So, in terms of cross posting and putting stuff out everywhere, I started doing that and had some success. But it was just it, it was too much. Um, you know, I as a part time thing, I've got to be able to streamline a little bit and uh, make the best use of my time. So for me, that's one platform, and uh, that's just less stuff for me to have to worry about screw up potentially selling on one platform and not getting it off the other, that sort of thing. So, um, having multiple platforms might've helped this weekend because it was pretty slow. I didn't list a ton. We were celebrating, uh, my wife's birthday this weekend. So, uh, we did do that. I, but I did list a little bit, you know, I, I, I did have some stuff up over the last few days. So, you know, that algorithm should have been happy knowing that I was active. I sent out offers, that sort of thing. It's just, it's a little bit slow. Um, I'm hearing from a lot of people that uh, it's a little bit slow, and uh, that's eBay. I mean, it's up and down. For me, it's a lot slower than what I would like it to be right now. I feel like there's a lot of uh, attention drawn to national news and politics right now. Maybe that'll settle down at some point. We'll see. Uh, fourth quarter numbers are supposed to be hot online anyway, but then especially this fourth quarter was supposed to be good. So I don't know. We'll see. That said, Dallas Cowboys are supposed to be good this season. Let's look at what we got this weekend. It was, uh, like I said, it was relatively slow, but uh, you know, the, I'm real on this channel. I'm going to tell you when we sell a whole bunch of stuff, and I'm also going to be honest and tell you when, uh, you know what, it was a relatively slow weekend, but you know what, that was okay. Um, you know, those are nice sometimes in terms of just on the back end. It only took me uh, an hour to pack up everything today, even less than that, really, probably half hour, 45 minutes. I, I was done pretty quickly because it was a lot of easy stuff. So uh, looking at the stuff that we sold, not a lot of it, but there's good return on investment. These first uh, Stetson gloves, uh, leather gloves, women's gloves, really, really soft, uh, vintage, really nice piece, really old in the store. I mean, this is uh, probably pushing two years uh, that these have been sitting around. And uh, I think I got these in like a fill a bag sale. So I'm probably you know, 25 cents or something into them because they, they don't obviously take up that much room. They sold for $16.46 of free shipping. Just nice to get those out. Uh, this one, you look at it up here. I don't know how to say this. It's the uh, Joko Toko Ant Pitta. I don't know. It's an endangered bird and it's a t-shirt. Uh, I got this from my buddy Jeff and uh, took an offer for $15 plus shipping. Sold really quickly and uh, it even had like a little hole up here on the top. But uh, you know what? It moved quick and uh, I was willing to take an offer on that, especially because it, it did have that damage and they were okay with that. So I uh, did take that offer. $15 bucks plus shipping for that. This United Steelworkers hat, I knew it was cool when we picked it up at a garage sale. I picked it up for a dollar. Didn't really see any others out there on eBay quite like this. And so I listed it a little bit high and ended up going $24.49 plus shipping. So solid turnaround on the hat. This uh, Paul Korea jersey, pick this up. You might have seen this on a garage sale video. She had it marked at, I think it was $25 at this garage sale. And there was a little, it looked like a mustard stain. Like there was a little bit right here. And then like farther down, there was another real small one. And then a little bit of a flaw on the back. Some of the stitching had come uh, loose on part of it. You couldn't really tell unless you looked really close. Uh, so some flaws on this, but Paul Correa only played for the Avs for one season back. I think it was 2003, a little bit of a disappointing season. He was injured. Uh, things didn't work out, but I always liked him. You might, you know, for folks that know hockey, they probably remember him uh, with the Anaheim Ducks, and that's where he had his most success. Uh, but he did have one year with the Avs, but only one year makes that jersey relatively rare. So I priced it pretty high. We got this, uh, again, we got this for 15 bucks and look right here. We sold it 
for $90.99 plus priority shipping. And it really only lasted once I put this thing up. I've only had it up for about a week, maybe a week and a half. It didn't last very long at all. So, uh, you know, th this was a nice sale, especially I, I, I put off listing it. Uh, Roxanne tried to actually get the stain out. Uh, and it didn't come out, so it disclosed all of that in the listing, took pictures, all of that. Hopefully they paid attention and, and looked at the description and the pictures to make sure that they knew that that was the situation on there and we don't get that back because that's a really nice sale. So keep an eye out for jerseys, especially jerseys that are a little bit more rare. I happen to know that one as an abs guy and a hockey guy, but if you see one, look it up. You never know because that a really nice sale. And I talk about international sales surprising me sometimes uh, the things that sell overseas here's one of them this civil war set uh, this model kit uh it had uh, like cannons and stuff like that i picked this up at an estate sale basically it was a garage sale but it was like an estate clear out we paid a dollar for it and uh it sold for the equivalent of 52 dollars and 35 cents the australian dollar not quite as strong it's like 71 cents or something like that typically uh, so 52 bucks and change is what it comes down to after fees after shipping uh, and after our one dollar buy cost we end up profiting 24 bucks so pretty solid turnaround on that and uh again uh, civil war set going to australia i don't know Silver jeans, pretty good sale here. I uh, got these for uh, right about a dollar. This was a fill bag sale at Aaron's Thrift Store. And I put them up for auction just to try something different. I try to put a few things up for auction here and there. Um, I, I just feel like it increases activity in the store. It, you know, it doesn't hurt, certainly. Uh, you might get a little less for it than if you just put it at buy now and let it sit. But you know what? I, I was so little in, it was okay to do that with these. So a dollar in, and they sold for $22.50 plus shipping very easy jeans. Uh, typically, I send out in the padded flat rate envelope. Works very, very well. This cinch shirt, I uh, picked this up. I think this was a $2.99 uh, Goodwill pickup. And a uh, guy in Germany was interested in it. And uh, so I made him a deal because it's been sitting around for a little bit. Uh, got the equivalent in euros about $33.28. So after buy cost and and fees, shipping, all that, we make about 13 bucks profit on a shirt. And again, very easy to ship out. So okay with that. These three vintage locks, nothing into these. This is like a throw-in in a garage sale uh, after we got some other stuff. $9.98 plus shipping on these. And then this TV series, Batman Hot Wheels. Uh, again, uh, about 20, 25 cents in on all of these Hot Wheels that we've got listed. And this one went for $9.97 plus uh, international shipping to Canada. That through the eBay, uh, the international standard delivery, I think is what it is. Um, that going up to Ontario. And to this point, while I expect there'll probably be a sale or hopefully be a sale, come in uh, here in the next couple hours before bed or uh, you know even overnight, I sometimes get international sales uh, while I'm sleeping, but uh, that's all we got right now. So super slow weekend, but like I said, we're going to be real on this channel. And uh, the reality is it was a slow weekend. We had great return on investment, a couple of really nice sales, just not a whole lot of them. Now, one thing, because we do have a little bit of time, I wanted to point out, this is pretty cool. Check this out. I went into uh, Aaron's thrift store the other day, didn't have my uh, camera running. I picked up, I think uh, it was four hats that we picked up and that's the, that was really all we got there. Um, but then walking through the main part of his store, uh, I came upon this. Now check this out. I'm going to, I mean, it looks weird with me looking through it, but um, let's move to the side here. Look at this. We'll just do this. So that is kind of cool, right? I mean, is this something, first off, I'm curious if this is something y'all would pick up. Um, but it was something that I picked up because, uh, on the back, you can see, I don't want to put their address on there, I guess, but down there, um, that is my, my parents ran a business, uh, that, that was dad's side hustle, um, elf toys and crafts. He made, uh, wooden toys, wooden craft items that people would hang on their walls, that sort of thing. My dad made this. I found it in a thrift store. Crazy, right? Um, my dad made this. My best guess, uh, I guessed uh, about 20 years ago. I sent a picture to my mom. 
um, and said, hey, look what I found in the thrift store. Um, asked her when she thought maybe it was made. And uh, she said probably 20, 25 years ago. So um, really, really cool that, you know, I mean, it, obviously it's still, it's here in Montana, but 20 to 25 years ago, uh, you know, several hundred miles, you know, we're on the other side of the state from where this was made uh, in my garage growing up. Um, this may have been made when I was in high school. The way dad did this, um, you would drill holes. He would draw this all out on uh, on the wood, you know, had the pattern on the wood. And, um, you know, for the lines, obviously you just cut with, uh, with the scroll saw. A uh, really thin blade, bounces up and down. Um, but then there's all these little pockets in here, right? So he would drill a hole uh, on the drill press for every spot that had a hole. So, you know, there's a, there's a hole right here. There's a hole over here. There's a hole here, 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 here. You know, every void, you would drill a hole. Um, and so then what what you would have to do is basically take apart the saw every time uh, in, in order to cut this out. I mean, it's a really time-consuming process because you, you take the blade off and then you, you put the blade through the hole and then you cut out that one, you know, this one little section. Then you got to stop it. You got to pull the blade off again, put it through the next hole so you can see through all of these individual holes how long that takes, how intricate this is. Um, my dad is really, really good, honestly. My, my dad was very, very good at this stuff. Um, and so then he'd cut it all out. And, and this is super intricate. I mean, one little nick and all of a sudden, you know, this part cuts off, it's done. It's wasted. And, unless you can, you know, find a way to fix the pattern. But um, really cool and a uh, really neat piece. This obviously, this has a clock down in here. I think you can see along the edge um, a little bit. I, I don't think it probably shows up uh, on camera, but on the edge, there's a little bit when batteries corrode, you can see a little bit of acid in there. So uh, I'm going to see if I can find another clock from my folks. I'm going to see if my folks want this or, uh, or we might we might keep it. Um, I got to see if I can get that little clock out. I think I can and uh, pop a new one in there, but pretty cool to find a piece of family history in uh, in the thrift store. They used to go to um, like craft fairs and stuff like that. And then their stuff was in a, uh, at least at least one shop in uh, Red Lodge, Montana, um, you know, that, that consigned stuff and sold it. Um, but to find it over here and uh, find it that much longer later, much longer later, um, pretty cool. So uh, mom, dad, how about that? Pretty cool, right? Um, just thought I'd show that off to you guys and, uh, show you how good my dad is at stuff. I might, uh, maybe we'll, I'm scared that I'll knock it over and break the butterfly, but, uh, that's what I got for you today, guys. Um, we're, um, gonna have, come back with a live show tonight. This is one you're going to want to come back for. Um, we've got Not Your Dad CPA. It's a channel that you should subscribe to anyway. It's got fantastic information, but he's a really, really good interview. Uh, he's a reseller and, yeah, a CPA. So guess what? Uh, he knows all about taxes, and we're talking taxes tonight on Keeping It Real. So come back tonight with your questions. He's going to have answers. Uh, this is one that you're going to want to get in on, and uh, really cool that he was uh, willing to jump in on the channel you're going to probably start seeing him on some other channels uh, as we get uh, really around tax time because he's sort of the go-to. So I, I, I feel really, uh, really blessed and uh, really humbled that he was willing to come on the show. Uh, this is probably the first of many appearances that he's got this season. So uh, Not Your Dad CPA coming up tonight. That starts at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern right here. Until then, guys, we'll see you next time. Bye.